And let's go into the products of what Pumatronics has to offer. So first, we have the cam. And this is essentially a camera that allows you to take pictures of images. Um, the ITS cam is the product offering from Pumatronics. And these are the first component part of the four components of an LPR system. The second component part is the illuminator. The illuminator is essentially a strobe or flash lighting that allows you to take images, pictures of, of uh, license plates at night. The third component is the ITS Cam Pro, which is the user interface. This software is basically allows you to manage your camera systems by computer. And the last component part is the OCR, the optical character recognition software, which we discussed earlier. However, I want to make sure we note that the OCR software is not ready yet for the United States. It is only ready in Brazil. And that is a key point that we have to make, and we'll come back to that later on in the presentation. So these are the four component parts of an LPR system. However, Pumatronics also offers an all-in-one solution called the Vigia Plus. So with all these products in mind, our GAP objective this year of, was to determine if there is an LPR market in the United States. And if there is, is it viable for Pumatronics to enter this US market? And we have conducted significant research to reach that conclusion. Um, we went to the three conferences in the LPR industry. Ryan and Nigel both went to Curitiba, Brazil, where they met with Pumatronics and stayed with them and got a good understanding of what the product offering is and what the value chain is. We've conducted 150 interviews and spent over, over 112, 112 hours in these interviews. interviews. And, and at, at the specific, specific request, request of Pumatronics, we focused our research on competition. So that, that is why you'll see most, most of our time, 26% of our time, time spent on competition. competition. And after the six months of research we've done, we've come to the conclusion that Pumatronics should not enter the United States. Now, the three reasons are because it's a small and unattractive market, are because it's a crowded market, and because Pumatronics does not have a sustainable competitive advantage if it were to enter the United States. So let's go through each of these reasons now. The first reason is that it's a small and unattractive market. Now, a, a research shows that the US LPR market is 160 to $200 million. And that's a small number. However, if you break it down into its second parts, it gets even smaller. So the first segment is the law enforcement segment. And in this segment is essentially the police cars with two mobile unit cameras mounted on top of them. And then they're used to scan for surrounding criminal activity and license plates. The law enforcement segment, despite being the largest segment, there are many issues with this. The first is that the segment is dominated by three major players who have established first mover advantage. Now, because of this, they have created systems that are incompatible with other systems. And essentially, that has led to high switching costs for the competition if they wanted to enter. The second reason why law enforcement is not a viable segment is because our customers, who are the police officers in this case, demand a brand that shows a high quality product. Now, any new entrants that want to come in will be at a significant disadvantage because they won't have established this brand power. The third reason why the law enforcement segment is not a viable segment is because Pumatronics has less experience in the mobile units because most of their focus has been on uh, fixed units in Brazil. The law enforcement segment is dominated by mobile units. So for these three reasons, the law enforcement segment is not a viable entry point. Then there's the ITS, the Intelligent Transportation System segment. Now this segment refers to the toll roads, when people try to avoid paying their toll road fee. And the LPR cameras will, will then catch them. In this segment, it is the smallest segment of the three. And like the law enforcement segment, the customer, who is the government agency in this case, demands a brand that shows a high quality product. But the reason for this is because any misrecognition leads to lost revenue. Now, um, this is also a very relationship-based segment because government agencies need to have relationships with the contractors. And there's no guarantee that Pumatronics will be able to establish that relationship with a government agency. And there's 10-year life cycles for these systems. So the chance of getting reoccurring revenue is very small. So the ITS segment is not a viable entry point. And our third and final segment is the access control, the parking lot segment. Now, in this segment, it is also very small. An example, example of this, this you know, is, is the gate being raised when a car comes and is being detected by LPR technology. Um, it's a small segment. And our main customer here are the security integrators. Security integrators are focused on entire security system, where LPR is only a very small portion of that system. So we believe, that for that reason, it's a very low priority. LPR is a very li low priority for the security integrators. And ad in addition, there are many cheap substitutes available for LPR technology in the access control. 
You've all seen valets and cheap ticketing systems that currently are in use. So it shows that LPR in the access control segment is really only nice to have and is really not necessary. And so for that reason, access control is not a viable entry point. So we've shown you here that the total US LPR market is small and unattractive. However, it's also very crowded. These are only 19 of the 30 plus LPR competitors in the US market. We have Genetech, which dominates the access control segment. We have Vigilant, LSAG, and 3M, which dominate the law enforcement segment. And there are five players that dominate the ITS segment as well. So the main point I want to make is that not only is the US LPR market small and unattractive, but it is also very crowded. And that leads me to my last point. Pumatronics would not be able to enjoy a sustainable competitive advantage in the United States as it does in Brazil. Uh, take a step back here. The Brazilian government basically has a tax on any foreign products that are imported to the country from outside. Pumatronics enjoys that because there's a barrier to entry for its competitors in Brazil, but it will not enjoy the same tax advantage in the United States. Uh, the second point is that in the LPR industry, there's low potential for product differentiation. The, the reason is because LPR customers really only need LPR to do one thing, and that is to recognize license plates. But beyond that, there's not a lot of room for product innovation, and so there's not a lot of potential for differentiating their product. The last point is that there are unclear cost advantages. In Brazil, Pumatronics has a 90% market share and has clear cost advantage. But if it came to the United States, we would be able to set the prices, but we won't know what the competition's costs are in the United States. So it's unclear what that cost advantage might be, if there is any. So there's no clear cost advantage, there's no clear competitive advantage in the United States. And when you consider the fact that it's a small market, an unattractive market, and that it's a crowded market, that leads us to our conclusion that Pumatronics really should not enter the United States. However, we understand that Pumatronics is very passionate about entering the United States, so we wanted to do our due diligence to give them the lowest risk strategy should they decide to enter anyway. So how would, they, how would they do that? Well, we would first look at the value chain of a typical LPR system. In um, a typical LPR system, a single provider would provide an all-in-one solution, which includes the component parts of an OCR component, an LPR camera component, and then the user interface component as well. It would then package that together and send that to the, uh, the security integrator, who would then provide that to the end user. That is different from the access control segment, where in the access control segment, each of the component parts are provided and made by a different manufacturer. They would then be separately provided to the security integrator. And the security integrator, who is the one, who would combine them into a package and provide them to the end user. Now, the reason why I make this distinction is because Pumatronics does not have a full all-in-one solution ready for the United States yet. It does not have the OCR com com um, com component part. It does not have the user interface component part. But it does have a high-quality camera at a low cost. And so that leads us to our first point in the strategy, that we would sell the Vigia Plus hardware, which is the camera only, at a $670 price point, which is in the low end of the market, to the security integrators in the access control segment. The second phase in the strategy would be to spend the next year researching and developing a full all-in-one solution that includes OCR compatibility for the United States. And we estimate that would take about a year to develop. And then that leads us to our third phase, where once that year has expired and once that full solution is available and OCR compatibility is ready for the United States, we would sell that all-in-one all solution at a $970 price point, which is a competitive price in the, in the marketplace today. So we believe that this strategy provides Pumatronics with the best opportunity to enter the US market should they decide to enter. However, there are additional challenges with this strategy. The first is that US OCR algorithms are very difficult to create and implement. There are over 5,000 different possible plate designs in the United States because there's 50 to 100 different plate designs per state available. And there's only three types of plate designs in Brazil. In addition, another challenge is that the integrated relationships in the United States are very entrenched. And there's no guarantee that Pumatronics would be able to break into these integrated relationships on price point alone. So, Assuming that Pumatronics is able to surmount these challenges, and assuming they are, able to, they are able to execute on the strategy that we provided, we have run five-year projections to determine the financial viability of this low-risk strategy. Unfortunately, in the five-year projections, 
even that strategy does not pan out. After an initial $800,000 investment, it would take Pumatronics five years before they see any profit. Even at a very generous 10% discount rate, they would still get a very negative $1 million NPV. So essentially, the point that we want to make is that even in the lowest risk strategy scenario, in the best case scenario, they would still not make any money if they were to come to the United States. And essentially, that supports our initial conclusion that for the reasons that we gave before, that it's a small and unattractive market, that it's a, it's a very crowded and competitive market, and that Pumatronics has no sustainable advantage, competitive advantage, if it were to enter the United States. The, uh, even in the lower scenario, that they would have a negative NPV just reinforces our conclusion that Pumatronics should not enter the United States. And with that being said, we thank you very much, and we are ready for your questions. Thank you. So, you're the expert. All right. For it. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, I thought the presentation was terrific. Um, I, I just have to say it. It was a really succinct, extremely easy to understand presentation. Great job there. Um, and I also think you took the brave path, which is to say no, because it's, you know, no one ever wants to hear that, and and it's it's a tough conclusion. Most people don't accept it. Um, I guess the, the question I, that came up in my thinking as I was sort of reading through everything is you, you mentioned the high quality, low cost camera a number of times. Can you quantify that? Because it, it seems like that was their only competitive advantage. And is it, is it our true competitive advantage against suppliers in the United States? So just to repeat your question, you want us to quantify what we mean by high, high quality? High quality, low cost. Is, it, is the sure. image capture better? Is it lower to manu cost so, of manufacturer? That's so the main way that you measure uh, quality is by recognition rates. Okay. Um, part, of the, part of his speech was saying that there's little product differentiation because you either have high recognition rates or you don't. In Brazil, they have a very high recognition rate, much better or on par with anybody in Brazil. We're unsure of what that would be in the US because it hasn't been developed yet. Um, so we're only going off of what they have in Brazil. As far as cost-wise, um, as he mentioned, because of the uh, tax advantage that they have, their products are about 50% cheaper than any foreign competitor in Brazil. But that they, doesn't apply to That does not apply to the US. They do have low labor rates in Brazil, and they're um, uniquely situated to have a, a ton of knowledge in this particular field. But whether that would translate uh, to an overall, we know that we can price under at the low end of the market right now. We don't know what our competitors' costs are. So we don't know whether they can cut their prices to meet that. Um, basically, we only know what the costs are. And so we, it's unclear whether they have that cost advantage in the US. Is there any advantage with regard to effective range of the image capture? Anything technical about how the image would get captured that would differentiated other than cost? So as far as range, um, I don't think there's a clear advantage on, there, there are different companies that have, they have different ranges at which it can be used. Mm -hmm. I think most products have the ability to set that range depending on the situation. Okay, thank you. Did that answer your question? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, to sort of follow up on some of the things Mark was talking about, what, what comes across to me is the, uh, You've got a viable hardware system. You have a lot more unknowns in terms of the interface and the uh, optical recognition side. Um, so if you're a hardware play in the United States, it would seem that's the area to really focus on in terms of getting information about, you know, would your integrators, would your suppliers be interested? How do you form a relationship with them that's not just based on cost? And does it make sense? I mean, do you have a product in the United States by competitive United States terms is as attractive? I mean, I would think that, you know, having a tax advantage in Brazil means you not only are somewhat protected because of effective non-tariff trade barriers in Brazil 
for outside manufacturers coming into Brazil, but it also might give you an advantage as an exporter because you're exporting to a higher cost country that you know has higher costs just on an international currency basis. I mean, if you're that low and you're staying low, translated in United States terms, that, that could be quite an attractive advantage just on the hardware side. And if, if the hardware can stand on its own, that's the thing to confirm. And then following that, develop your relationship with your integrators and sort of get in there as a low cost hardware supplier at the very least, if, if you really want to go after the United States market. Sure, I agree with what you're saying. Can you ask that as a question or? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, have you examined what it takes to actually confirm that information? So we've interviewed a, we've interviewed a number of integrators uh, uh -huh. during our primary research, and uh -huh. based on the interest level they've shown in Pumatronics' products, we estimate that approximately five integrators will purchase um, the LPR cameras in the first year. Um, the average number of cameras sold for each project would be about eight. Um, and our sales projections ramp up over the next four years, but because SGNA expenses, marketing expenses, and R&D expenses are so enormous, the venture is still unprofitable. That actually brings me to my second question. When I quickly looked at the financials there, it seemed to be um, you know, reflecting the phasing in of some of the other things you were talking about, if that's a correct assumption. And I was wondering, why does the SGNA jump up so much, and why is it so high relative to the uh, overall revenue? Sure. So we estimate the company needs one sales rep in the first year, one technical support rep. Um, the company would need to attend two conferences to market their products. Mm -hmm. um, the number of sales rep would increase to two in the second year and three in the third year. The salary of the sales reps are 90000 each, which is why SGNA has grown so rapidly from year one to year three. Um, we also assume that the three sales reps would actually sell close to 1,300 cameras in year five, which is a very ambitious assumption. And even at those, even with those expenses, um, the company, the, the U.S. market entry would not be profitable, and the MPB would be negative. Okay. Yeah, I found the business plan and the presentation very good, and. Uh, having been and having parked a car at LAX and then waiting forever to get out of there. It seems to me that each ticket takes two minutes to process. So I would think that there is a market for this access control here. So I started wondering about uh, uh, the 2,500 and 5,000 uh, different license plate designs. You mentioned somewhere there that Texas and uh, California plate formats are the best uh, the, or the easiest to OCR. And I started wondering, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Google have done a lot of OCR, you know, coffee stain newspapers and books and so on. And uh, their OCR API is available. I have no idea what it costs and so on. But in your thing, <clears throat> if one would co take California only, not the whole US, and try something like uh, uh, either uh, their own alg algorithms for OCR or or the Google APIs. Have you ever thought about that? <clears throat> yes, we did consider that. This, you know, because, as you mentioned, Google is going, they, they've published their API mm -hmm. and has made it available for you know, anyone's use, pretty much. <laughs> but the, the key component is testing it. So in access control and even with ITS and law enforcement, the recognition rates are very, very key. So we know that Pumatronics has a very high quality camera capable of taking clear images in the various number of conditions. But the second component to that is the optical character recognition. Mm -hmm. So from a, from a product standpoint, we could, an integrator or even the company could tie the API <coughs> to the LPR camera, but extensive testing would have to be conducted. So for example, you know, California is a state that attracts a lot of out-of-state residents. So even, even if that API was really, really great at capturing California plates with the white background um, with the ones that are very distinct from eyes. <clears throat> what about the people from Nevada? What about Arizona? You know, what about the East Coast? 
we, we also did a, a quick study um, at LAX airport um, based on how many out-of-state license plates park at lot C. Hmm. Lot C is a $12 um, parking plate, it's the cheapest. <clears throat> and the attendants said that approximately 10% of the plates in that lot on a given day are out of state. So if we apply you know, that sort of percentage to a high flow area like LAX, that would benefit from that solution just because the API is great, and let's say that Google API is able to capture 100%, there's still that 10% that may or may not be captured. And since the, the standard, the gold standard in Brazil is 99%, and we're assuming that the gold standard of recognition in the US is 99%, it would be unacceptable to have that still um, untested for the out-of-state plates. Okay. Um, have you thought about whether the camera could be wrapped to other OEMs? who might view it as an advantage uh, to not have to R&D their own cameras. So, I mean, f you know, if you look at the cell phone industry, for example, even Apple was buying Samsung displays in spite of the fact that they were competing with Samsung, you know, for, for a long time. Now they're doing their own, which is you know, good for them. But, but for a long time, they were buying those displays because it was a lot cheaper or they can get a higher level of quality than what they could produce themselves. Do you think that this product might have that competitive advantage with other OEMs? So in other words, they don't have to direct sell into projects. They don't have to direct sell to the, the people who are doing the deployments. They sell to the camera manufacturers who are supplying them. More of a channel marketing approach. Yeah, I mean, it could, yeah. is there, could they go up or down the, the food chain and try to it's, it's definitely a good point, um, and we know that our um, our client is in is in talks with other competitors in there, but it's a little bit out of our scope um, okay. of what we were focusing on in the okay. US market. Fair enough. No, you 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 kind of narrowed the decision context pretty well, and I, you know I think it's sort of it's it's pretty convincing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you estimate is the cost of doing all US license plates for the OCR? The question, I believe, was uh, the total cost, we think, to do um, all of the license plates, or yeah. finish the R&D on uh, OCR. Yeah, so based on the R&D expenses um, the company has spent to develop their OCR software in Brazil, we estimate that um, the R&D expense to develop the OCR software for the U.S. market would be 120000 in the first year, mm -hmm. um, close to uh, 50000 in the second year, and then uh, maintenance R&D about, for about $20,000 thereafter. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be very curious if you had a licensing strategy or a, you know, a, a distributor-oriented strategy, the cost um, arrangement there would be completely different, and you might have a completely different ROI yeah. to, to examine, and it might be a positive uh, ROI instead of a negative one, but, you know, partly because your SG&A would not have to be as high, which is your outstanding item there that just looks dramatically lopsided. Uh, and I, I think maybe that that you know the client or you, you know it's it's worth running that scenario, just on a financial model basis to see if it makes any sense at all. You know, kind of what what is it a ballpark yes that needs further examination or is it also a no? So we conducted a sensitivity analysis um, to evaluate the upside potential of. The U.S. market entry versus the downside risk, and um, right, but we're talking a different business model, right? Yeah. If you were to look back, would you modify the problem you were focusing on? I mean, now that you know what you know, would you have approached the problem differently to examine other areas? Did you guys talk about what other what are the other things that could be investigated? Yeah. 
I hate that word, but yes. <laughs> um, so one of the things that we tried to do is uh, we looked at best practices in mm -hmm. the industry. And one of the more interesting things that we found um, in the law enforcement realm was a company called uh, DRN, which is a sister a brother company of Vigilant. And one of the unique things that they're doing is they have sort of cornered the repo market. They, have, they offer a service for repo men that um, basically they allow repo men to repossess. They give them a, a black and white list of cars that need to go. And the repo men go out and search for that for a small fee. But the bigger issue here is that uh, DRN owns the data that all of these hundreds or thousands of repo men across the US are um, scanning. So they get, I think they have a database of four billion yeah. and it's increasing by 100 million every month. Um, I'm sure that number is outdated as we talk right now. This was probably, every car? I mean, um, every car across the US. So wherever a repo man, and they have a whole network of people that are using their system. So they're constantly scanning, and majority of the people are obviously like you and I. Um, you know, so it's legal because they do not have your name. They have your license plate and a date and time. Um, but it's very useful. They can package that data, run analytics on it, and sell that to insurance companies. Uh, so if you're worried about, if an insurance company is worried whether you're actually at the location that you say you're at, they can um, go backwards and, and geolocate you. Um, also, um, what is it, the auto finance loan, they can easily find <coughs> people that are avoiding their loans. Let's say you couldn't come up with your car payment, so you hightailed it to Arizona. They can actually try to figure out where you are and figure out which house you might be living at and then call that residence to try to figure out if you could make a smaller you know, payment and still stay on your, on your thing. So this data is actually very useful and it's, it's the reason that they've been able to make uh, 33 million just in that data part alone um, and why they're one of the leaders. About two years ago, um, those companies were not in the top three and they've, they've pushed forward and now are a leading player. So what we think, and back to your original question, is Pumatronic should focus on that in Brazil. It's a relatively new market in Brazil, and this is something that they could potentially corner um, and maintain their uh, advantage in Brazil for years to come. <coughs> Again, this is a little out of scope, but you asked, so I thought I would yeah, give you a wow. solid answer. Who knew? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. If we have no further questions, we could now join in a conference discussion I think that's an interesting, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, theme to, to focus on. That's kind of really interesting. So, yeah. With that, congratulations for your presentation. Thank you guys very much for your time. <clears throat> Before we we have that, I want to uh, thank the management of the company. This is a certificate for the uh, participating in our program. Thank you very much for being part. And here are two gifts. You can take all your gifts you buy in the UCLA student store home with. Oh my. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat>